I see this all the time and it makes me angry when I see people making poor decisions when purchasing electric motorcycles. Whether they are uninformed or whether they were promised unrealistic specs, whether they overpay. In this video I'll try to break down currently available motorcycles on the market and inform you what has what benefits and what you should know about. I have to say this at the very beginning that I am biased. I'm an e-bike developer and user for the past seven years. I absolutely fell in love with this technology. Obviously, I started with powerful e-bikes and always chasing more and more power and more features that bothered me when using them. So I ended up developing my own motorcycle and I'll be comparing this to everything else that is on the market. I'm currently in a USA on the West Coast in my camper van. If you're in California and you would like to collaborate or test ride, send me an email. So I'm, I'm showing you this chart that I'm also sharing in the description of this video. So you can open it yourself and you can check it out and you can leave me comments if something is off. Suron X is the first bike. It's so popular and it's very heavily modified by the community. It makes sense. I've always loved the way Suron looks. I think it's a killer design and it's a fun little bike, but it's like I said, a little bike. Unless you're five foot two or similar, don't even think about buying it because these bikes are so ridiculously small. You can even see on some of the videos on YouTube how bigger guys just, just this is just not for us. I'm six foot two and I struggled with this with e-bikes and e-motorcycles the entire time. This is unfortunately not for us. Let's take a look at specs. The battery is 60 volts. This is important to know that high power bikes usually have a higher voltage. It, it at least makes sense from a design perspective because with lower voltage it's just more amps. It heats up the system. It degrades the batteries faster. It just makes sense as you have a higher powers to go higher higher with voltage too. So this 60 volts, uh, 2.4 kilowatt hour battery, they claim 50 kilometers or 30 miles range because this is so weak that's only 6 kilowatts. I think you just you would just lock the throttle and ride it like this the whole time. That's kind of the limiting factor that actually lasts to bigger range with low power. I think it should be a little bit less. And then last thing it's important to uh, notice this is charging time. In reality, when you have a slow chargers, it sometimes limits the use of that bike once a day. Because imagine when you wake up, when you go riding around lunch, you go for a ride maybe an hour, maybe two. Um, then you end up somewhere around 2, 3 p.m. And you have in this case three and a half hours charge time. Off season, that's already dark. When you do a one-way trip and you want to sit in a pub and charge it for a bit, it's very inconvenient long break. And I'm purposely saying it right at the beginning because I'm going to be pointing out the charge times. It's really important. Okay, let's go next to the Laria MX-5 Pro. It's a very popular bike because they finally bring some more power. It's very reasonably priced. I think this is a direct Suron competition and it's actually so much more value for the price. Same issue that it's small, a little bit heavier bike. It's a 72 volt system, so this is kind of the standard. And then 13 kilowatts is a is a beautiful power for younger guys, for beginners. Charge time, three hours is kind of standard. Three power modes, it's kind of classic. With these bikes, I don't even think you use actually lower power modes. You just use the highest power, but it's, it's up to you. Variable region, nice thing. Range is kind of laughable, <laughs> to be honest. That's definitely not 74 miles. And this is common with sellers that they just overpromise, but under deliver. <laughs> this is this is just not possible. I don't know under what conditions you would be able to do this. No, I don't even think under any conditions it's possible to do it. Now we have the basic ones out of the way, and we can move to more interesting ones. So Altis Sigma has been kind of a new star on the market. I absolutely love the design. I think it's killer. They again go a little bit higher with a battery. So if you're in this range of Suron and Talaria, I think this is very competitive bike that has bigger battery, 3.4 kilowatt hours, uh, 98 volt system. So that immediately is a well-designed bike with a high voltage like this. Altis Sigma is actually a very cool powerhouse that for such a small bike, having 22.5 kilowatt peak power is really good. I think for the size and for the weight, which is 185 pounds and 84 kilos, this is amazing. And they say it has a gearbox. I don't know uh, much about this. I don't know why would why you would have it on such a small bike, but maybe I'm missing something. Especially with this higher voltage system, you can gain higher speeds. So default wheels are kind of a non-standard 19 and 19 inch. Usually the motocross bikes have 21 front and 19 rear. Or I think it's pretty common to have 21 and 18 at the back. Pretty classic. They don't mention region. I'm not sure if it has it or not. I think it's a nice feature because you wear brake pads much less, but don't expect any significant charge back to the battery. 
Again, this is um, one of these small bikes, so seat height is exactly the same, like Sturon and Talaria range. I think this is still kind of two ideal conditions. My prediction would be probably 40, 40, 50 kilometers. I don't know what it is in miles, 35 maybe. It's pretty difficult to say because it depends on a, too many things. It depends on a windy conditions, it depends on the weight of the rider, it depends on your maximum speed because higher speeds you have bigger wind resistance and it's not increasing the consumption by 5%, 10%. It actually increases the consumption like 30-50% when you go fast. Top speed is pretty good, 70 miles per hour, 112. I think that's exactly because of the high voltage. This is the last bike that I have in this uh, smaller size category. This is E-Ride Pro S Air. Again, very popular bike. These are pretty much direct competition with Altis Sigma. Lower voltage, that's the standard, uh, 72 volts. A little bit higher peak power, 25 kilowatt. Sure, I, I believe you can feel the difference a little bit. The battery capacity is a little bit bigger too, 3.6 kind of insignificant. Definitely, it's important to say with lower voltage and a higher peak power, that these cells will be certainly much more stressed. What it means, they heat up much more, de they degrade faster. 100 kilometers an hour is still very nice maximum speed. Price is pretty much exactly competitive to Altis Sigma, 5,500 US dollars. They say a variable region. I noticed, I think Suranstrom mentioned that the lever is kind of off. Three and a half hours charging time. What I would just say with this with this category to sum it up, then you need to be uh, looking at components, what they use. And they heavily impact the weight of the bike. It's obviously the battery, more cells, more weight, but it's not as crazy significant. What makes bigger difference is mainly the, the components. Front suspension, brakes, rear suspension, wheels and tires. It's a big difference when some of these like Suron X use bicycle components. The front fork is usually for downhill bikes and they are very lightweight for these bikes. The issue is as you go higher with power, these components are completely insufficient. The bikes uh, become too heavy for the suspension so it suffers much more. When you try to break down from 25 kilowatts, it feels wrong on a bicycle brakes. It feels completely off. And I know this uh, E-Ride Pro, Altis Sigma, these two I'm pretty sure have motorcycle components, but I'm just saying it so you know when you're looking at other motorcycles or e-bikes. Let's go to these mid-sized motorcycles. I think it's called Ribbit Antem. I think this is a Californian company. It might be a personal taste. It seems to be kind of bulky, heavy, just the design is, is just not my taste. And then when I look at the specs, 75 kilos, 165 pounds, weight is, is very reasonable. The battery is 4.3 kilowatt hours. That looks reasonable. 50 miles per charge, 80 kilometers. I think under certain conditions when you really try hard, very low speeds on a nice road and very lightweight rider, it might be possible. Maximum speed, 45 miles per hour. I think for cities, that's what this is probably intent for. It might be okay, but I would probably get bored after a first ride on this. 80 minutes charging, reasonable. Now we're finally getting to some fast chargers. Seat height is adjustable and it looks pretty cool. So they go from 30 to 34 inches adjustability. It looks pretty killer. I don't know what they do, if, if it's motorized or what it is. It's the feature I always wanted for our bikes. We still have it as an open chapter that we would like to develop it, but now we're focusing on a more important stuff. As, and uh, as soon as we get it out of the way, we'll probably revisit these older unfulfilled dreams. The price range is six and a half to seven and a half thousand dollars. This bike actually is the first on the list that has integrated built-in charger. I need to pause this and speak about the importance of it. Uh, when you look at some of the different chargers, they're just so bulky and they're heavy. And some of them are so bulky that you can't even fit them in a backpack. So it changes how you behave with this bike because then you can only be using it kind of around a central point, like a charging station, if you wish, like your house. That is difficult with this to go for one-way trip with guys, do multiple charges on the way there, and charge at that location, and then second day come back. You would need full on a vehicle that brings all your stuff. It's kind of missing the point. There's also this range anxiety that when you go out and you're like, I'm having fun, I'm gonna go a little bit further. <laughs> and then like, oh, I don't have my charger. I'm not sure if I can make it. <laughs> and this is so typical and people learn as they get to these situations. Okay, next bike, BMW CE02. This I see as a very niche bike. Again, I, I can kind of understand well the um, style of it, very low seat. It's only 29 inches, 75 centimeters. It's kind of a mid-size motorcycle. 
It's extremely heavy. I think this is one of the heaviest bikes on this whole list. That's 291 pounds, 132 kilos. Uh, the battery is smaller than the previous bike. It's uh, 3.9 kilowatt hours. 11 kilowatt peak power, slower charger, three and a half hours charge time. Price range is, in my opinion, a little bit higher. Seven, seven and a half to eight and a half thousand dollars. They say that the charger is massive and heavy. I think this is exactly the case I just mentioned. Uh, this is exactly the bummer of um, carrying this in a backpack. It's just a bummer when you go for one-way trip and half of your backpack is just a charger. And then having two heavy backpacks, it's kind of becoming tiring as you ride more. 95 kilometers maximum speed, 59 miles per hour. Now we're getting to the most popular bikes. Higher price range for sure, but I think these are the kind of the serious business. What you need to evaluate when you look at the price is it is actually so much cheaper longer you use it. Because charging it is ridiculously cheap. Electricity is cheap. A lot of people, including myself, I charge them from solar panel, it doesn't cost me anything. And the behavior full-on changes. It's a little bit different with combustion engine motorcycle, because every single time, back voice in my head is like, do I really want to go riding and spend $50 for a few hours to have fun? Versus electric motorcycles, it's like, once you make the purchase and you pour the money in, it changes the behavior, because when you have it, it's almost stupid not to use it all the time. Ultra B is, I think, great looking bike and it's very well balanced, very well spec'd out. Pretty standard 74 volt system. 4 kilowatt hour is kind of a nice sweet spot in my opinion. 85 kilos is, is a, again, very nice spec. I think this is a very reasonable bike overall. Range is completely unrealistic in my opinion with this, with this power bank. Unlike some of the other bikes, I don't even think this is achievable in theory. It's really tricky with range. Because you want to have fun, you just don't want to be riding the lowest possible speed to get somewhere. It becomes so boring and so tiring, and it takes forever to get to that location. And it's like, yeah, nice, you achieved the spec that you have range, but believe me, it's a misery <laughs> to be riding under these conditions. And, and like, great, you achieved a big stat. Congrats. <laughs> so I think this is on a higher end with price, seven and a half thousand. It still, I think, ships with 19 inch front wheel and 18 inch rear wheel, which is kind of not standard. I think it looks much better when people install the standard 21 inch wheel. Okay, this is where I placed our Havoc. Like I said, I'm biased. I designed this thing. I love the way it looks. I've always been a big fan of simple minimalist industrial design. This bike is full-on designed around the battery first, that we designed the optimum battery pack, and then we uh, made the minimum amount of material around it. It's kind of unusual just to having the structure as a subframe. We purposely have it because I find it interesting, and we also have this huge potential to create cargo space, a big luggage capacity, exactly for this purpose of riding for trips, overnight or one-way multiple charges. It's just so much more freeing when you can have the cargo actually not on your back. <laughs> so let's take a look at the specs. We have higher voltage, we have 84 volt uh, system. We're transparent about what battery cells we use. We use Molycell P45B for the biggest battery. We can fit in 5.8 kilowatt hour battery capacity, which is, in my opinion, more than I ever wanted. We were really happy with uh, 3.4, 3.2, uh, then it was amazing with 4 kilowatt hours, and now like 5.8 kilowatt hours is absolutely, in my opinion, beautiful, beautiful capacity, especially with these higher uh, peak powers, because it just drains the battery so much faster. In this category, one of the highest peak power, which is 32 kilowatt, it's absolutely nuts. Uh, this bike does 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4 seconds. The torque is just ridiculous. <laughs> Second thing that I'm really proud of is fast charger and it's built in in a frame. So bringing this back home, uh, chargers in a backpack, kind of a bummer. We also incorporated a long 16 feet cable. You have a lot of mass in the garage, difficult to access the outlet. So that's why we have a really long cable that you only open this flexible door pull the whole cable out and you have a 16 feet range to overcome any obstacles that are between your bike and the outlet. I'm just trying to be a little bit more realistic with the range. I know 120 kilometers and 74 miles is possible, but it's again the same situation that you would have to be pretty reasonable and you would need to have these situations that you really need to get somewhere to charge it. Yes, it will be more efficient, it's possible, but you should expect range like half of it when you go absolutely ballistic aggressive the whole time 
and something in between, depends on your writing style. You kind of decide the range based on how you write. If you need to go further, you need to moderate the throttle a little bit more. When you're around the town, when you're commuting, when you're picking stuff up, everything that fits in your backpack is just so much more fun to go on this bike uh, because of the dynamic. You just fly through the traffic, you go between cars, you completely shoot out of a traffic light. Nothing can compete, uh, in my opinion, the beautiful experience with these bikes. Now we're going to more expensive bikes. This Suron Storm B, it's the, I think, highest end of these Suron bikes. This finally comes with full motocross wheels, 21 and 18. That's a maximum speed is 109 kilometers per hour. I'm pretty surprised because they have higher voltage. 5.7 kilowatt hour battery, beautiful. They just have a slow charger, four hours. Again, same issue that it makes it usable only once a day. 22 kilowatt peak power, a little bit lower. The range seems to be pretty realistic. Congratulations on that, 50 miles and 80 kilometers. I think is is pretty uh, spot on. I think it's it's very realistic. Price range is seven and a half to eight and a half thousand dollars. It's pretty big deal to say that you rarely charge from zero to hundred percent, forty percent to hundred percent. It's rarely from zero, so the charge time completely changes. Now it's not hundred minutes anymore. It's like sixty minutes, and it means when you're just visiting a friend, when you have just random outlet opportunity to quickly charge, twenty minutes of a charge time make a huge difference with the range. Right away, it extends the range so much in just stupid 20 minutes. That, that's complete game changer. Zero FXE is a very common street bike, twelve and a half thousand dollars Bigger battery, 7.2 kilowatt hours. Good peak power, 34 kilowatt hours, I think will satisfy a lot of people. Heavier bike makes sense comparing what it is, 140 kilos, 310 uh, pounds. Maximum speed, pretty impressive, almost 140 kilometers per hour, 85 miles per hour. That's pretty beautiful. Range, maybe, depends on the tires. I would be probably more skeptical, but who knows, it might be doable. And again, typical big deal problem that it's kind of overnight charging only. Uh, so you need to plan it, you need to prep it, you kind of need to be on the top of a game, but it definitely helps when you have a bigger battery pack. And it also obviously makes sense that with bigger power bank, obviously the charge time is longer, especially with slow chargers. They do have integrated charger, but it's only 65 watts. I think it's a cool bike. And now I would like to point out King sitting on the top of the hill. It's the Stark Vart, the beast of a bike. So this one has 60 kilowatt peak. That's for most people, they vocalize it. It's kind of out of the range of their skill set. <laughs> it's absolutely mind blowing. They usually run it on lower powers. It's a full size bike. It sells around 11, 12 thousand dollars. 360 volt is completely different leak. The weight is spot on. That's 260 pounds, 118 kilos. Range, I believe, might be possible with this huge power bank. They also use the same cells like we do, Modicel P45B, it's the best cells on the market. Obviously for the price, that is out of the range for uh, most people. It's it's killer, this is, the, this is the king. If you have the money, don't even consider any other options. This is your ticket. People love them. I'm in all of these discussion forums, so obviously it's kind of biased um, because people that have issues actually go online and complain. But I see a lot of issues that people point out. And obviously, like, they sell a lot of bikes, so it happens. But, like, people say that they charge it for a few minutes and the battery is gone. Customer support uh, sends them new battery pack. It's kind of a hassle to replace, but it's doable. Some people said they had a bad lug and replaced them three times. Some people have issues with the drivetrain. It is, like, a one-day job, I think, for two people to replace the whole thing. So some unlucky guys had to do this few times. It's a bummer. Uh, I read some of these opinions that, like, people just gave up on the Vark. But, like I said, that I, in my opinion, uh, they just sell so many units that it just can't happen. People that have them are always like 100% get it, it's worth it, it's amazing. You won't go back to combustion bikes. This is a wrap. If you guys find this video helpful, it takes me a lot of time to edit and film. Uh, the least amount of effort you can do would be liking this video and leaving any kind of a comment. I've been training people to build their own uh, powerful electric motorcycles and bicycles. I sell video guides online. Uh, I'm currently giving for free video guides how to build your battery, how to build your powerful 6 kilowatt bicycle. So if you go to my website down in the description, you can leave your email there and you'll get this whole package for free. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Take care guys, I'm going riding, still nice weather. I'm gonna charge it, take advantage of this beautiful location.